Born to a cobbler and a cleaner, the world is bright, much brighter than the womb. In fact, you don't even open your eyes for the first few minutes. As you grow older, you realize the world isn't as bright as you had once anticipated, because when you're three, the czar dies, and the new czar is kind of a douchebag, creating a secret police force who are considered above the law, and dominate anyone who didn't agree with their views or questioned the czar or really just mess with anyone they feel like, because they can. Your father becomes abusive, so your family saves you and moves towns. Despite industrialization, Russia was falling behind the majority of the world. Over 80% of Russians are peasants. Your mother is determined to get you into school, something no one in your family has ever achieved. You manage, through slight deceit, to get yourself into a fancy pants school reserved normally for children of the clergy. Slow government makes reforms do very little to help the citizens they seek to. Your mother makes sure that you are well dressed as you attend school. A day's wage cannot even buy people the food to eat well that day. You become interested in the arts. You are especially fond of poetry. One day, you are hit by a car. Well, not a car, but a horse-drawn wagon called a Phaeton. That's not good. I don't think I pronounced that right. This hospitalizes you for several months, which you are very displeased with. How dare the wealthy mistreat the poor? How dare they mistreat you in such a way? You decide you want to deal with poverty in some way when you grow up. Despite being brought up Christian by your loving mother, you decide that evolution just makes more sense. As you graduate school with flying colors, your teachers recommend you go to a seminar, a higher level of education. Your mother is very proud. Throughout your college going years, you become less motivated to get good grades or be respectful. What's an atheist like you doing in a seminar anyways? You are more interested in spending your time reading books that are highly discouraged by the school and join a sort of underground book club. It is here that you learn of the teachings of Karl Marx and communism. You leave seminary school after the semester to pursue more important things, like overthrowing the government. Or, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. First you decide to tutor middle class kids to help them get ahead in, in life. You also picked up the hobby of occasionally preaching socialism in the streets. Standing on your little soapbox, preaching how to improve the lives of the people. You would have made a great priest if you had stuck to it. You stage a few riots, with which the authorities are not impressed. But your new friends, the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, are. They decide to send you to a port city, where you are identified by an Ukra agent, an anti-terrorist group formed to combat the radical left, and you kill him. Anything for the people. After another riot, you are arrested by the Ukra. After a year of causing trouble in prison, you are sent to a three-year exile in Siberia. You attempt to escape. A fail. You attempt to escape again. Success. At some point, you convince Karus van Dijs to marry you using the power of the three M's. And I'm skipping a lot here because I've realized uh, if I keep going at this level of detail, it is going to take me way too long to cover all of this. But basically, the main important thing is you decide to grow an absolutely sick mustache. Also importantly, a civil war breaks out pointedly because of the Communist Party leader, Vladimir Lenin. The war is over and communism has won. Two years after establishing communism, Lenin dies of a stroke. And on his deathbed, he specifically asks that you do not become the leader of the communist Russia because you're too harsh to the citizens, whatever he means by that. Lenin's testament is read to the provincial leaders within the text Lenin talks about how he does not approve of you, among some other communist leaders. Out of embarrassment, you offer to step down. Because of this act of humility, the council allows you to stay on. There's a power struggle between many people on who should lead the communist party now that Lenin has died. The main person you will see as an opposition to you is Trotsky. You hate Trotsky, and you don't think he's fit to lead. Over the next few months, you guarantee your position as leader by removing supporters of your opposition from their positions of power. You make friends with the leader of Germany, only to later be betrayed by him. Going on to attack your country, you make a relentless force of backlash, making sure he stands no chance. You defeat his army, despite casualties on your side being much higher. This marks your entry into World War II, which would later end 
but your involvement and leadership solidly confirming you as the leader of your people. Now that you're solidly in power, you make sure the media doesn't show you in a bad light, creating a cult of personality, showing yourself as somewhat of a father figure. You remove opposition like Trotsky from famous photos, so he will not be seen in a positive light. You notice many religions place certain individuals as being above others, so you ban religion. You rewrite certain parts of history to put communism and yourself in a better light, including encouraging the rumor that your abusive father is not actually your real father, and saying that you are expelled from seminary school for rebellious communist actions when you really just left of your own accord. You also establish gulags and work camps for those who oppose you and your wise ways. Sure, many people die in these work camps rather than rehabilitating them, but that's the necessary step sometimes. You establish collective farms to make food for your people. Farmers were not forced to join these collectives, but many feared that not joining them may have dire consequences. You establish yourself as a father figure to the people, and the motherland as your partner, having people fight not only for themselves in World War II, but for you, ever the encourager. You help workers to see working as a patriotic action for their people. On one such occasion, showcasing a coal miner who, supposedly, mined 1,500 tons of coal in a single day and on many World War II posters stating that the army volunteers were doing it not only for themselves and their land, but for you. You largely used Trotsky and other opposition as scapegoats to blame your problems on when things go awry, but you weren't opposed to mixing it up and blaming pr professionals of whatever trade was suffering presently. You are not a fan of liberalism. Some could say you reject it even. Under your rule, there were never elections. And speech and media weren't really free to do whatever they wanted. They were suppressed so that you were only seen in a good light not being looked on negatively. As that sort of thing could lead to a revolt. No matter what you did in life, you always did it exceptionally. And your death was no different. No one could stop you. No one but yourself. Your brain tried to kill you. And even that took three days. You are Joseph Stalin. And I just did a whole video essay in the second person. I'm very proud of myself. Feel free to applaud. Uh, I hope this. I hope that. I hope this video is you showing in front of the class. Hopefully, just the teacher brushes it. Oh no.